Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Caregiver's Toolbox, Tools for Everyday Caregiving, where we give you information and education on senior care topics. My name is Ryan McInniff. I am the owner of Minute Women Home Care, and today I'm joined by a great guest, Yuri Pearl. He is one of the owners of a software called Catch, and he is also a fellow NIPC member. So, Yuri, thank you so much for coming on, and give everybody an idea of what Catch does. Yeah, absolutely. And Ryan, thanks for having me on. I'm very excited to be here. Um, so Catch, we are building scam protection uh, for older adults. We're on, we're on a mission to protect older adults from cyber scams and frankly, everybody. I mean, we're, we're all vulnerable. Um, older adults are a little bit more. They're targeted more because they have stored wealth um, and because generally have less experience with technology. And the whole genesis of this thing um, was... About six months ago now, I have two co-founders. We met at a previous tech company. And one of their grandmothers fell victim to a vicious online scam uh, involving email. Um, lasted a couple of weeks. Um, and sadly, she lost tens of thousands of dollars. And my co-founder, kind of being the closest to her and, and the, the most tech savvy in the family, was, was helping her pick up the pieces and kind of pulled me and, uh, and my other co-founder in. Um, you know, dealing with, you know, trying to get her access back to her accounts, dealing with law enforcement agencies, trying to get the, the, the money back, unfortunately, to no avail in this case. And then ultimately, once the dust settled, we were looking for something to protect her going forward, to allow her to maintain her independence. Um, and we didn't find anything great out there. And, and us being at a tech company, um, we had robust cybersecurity and we had scam education and phishing simulations um, and all the things needed to kind of be protected. Um, and, and we saw that that didn't really exist in the consumer space and especially in the senior space. Um, and so we decided to build something ourselves. No, that's, that's fantastic. And it's certainly, um, it's certainly much needed because obviously seniors are a vulnerable population. Um, and, and so as technology keeps growing and baby boomers are aging and they're using iPhones or using these things, the old school way of doing things is really um, different. I, I didn't tell you about this uh, because I wanted to be fresh, but literally 10 minutes ago, I got an e-fax from the former deputy oil and mineral wealth wealth minister in Syria who doesn't have 59 million, not 60 million, but 59.8 million dollars he needs me to hold on to. So they're still going by <laughs> fax as well. And I couldn't believe it because I knew we had this podcast. And I was like, it couldn't have been at a more perfect time. Um <laughs> It's so, I mean, it's it's very much a, uh, a spray and pray model. Um, it costs nothing to send out e-faxes. It costs nothing to send out emails for the most part. Um, and, you know, all you need is one person to click. You have one person that gets scared or nervous, an IRS email that comes through that says you owe us $60,000 and, and pay now or, you know, go to jail. And then the accounts are given or given access to, and then it, it disappears overseas. And and like you said in your example, I imagine the rate of getting your money returned is extraordinarily low um, because it's there's no jurisdiction over in wherever these folks are. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And and it's always been kind of that spray and, and pray model and, and it's getting worse because their conversions are getting higher. So they send out about 3.5 billion scam emails uh, a day and that's over a trillion scam emails a year. Um, and a lot of us have experience with some of those lower quality ones, but what's happening is that they're getting better fast, um, partly with the rise of AI. Um, the, the, the scammers are, frankly, they're getting innovative and they're organizing very quickly um, and, and operationalizing into these, these large organizations. And they're using AI, both the language models to clean up emails, but they're also using it to, to generate fake voices. A lot of us have heard of the, the child and grandchild scams. Um, a lot of people have fallen victim to that. I've even uh, spoken to some people last week who video chatted with someone they were in a romantic relationship with, romantic in quotes for those listening, um, and so they're, they're innovating fast and our hypothesis, our thesis is, okay, we need to innovate fast too. So our models also use AI um, to detect, looking at all these different data points um, and starting with email um, to, to have that extra set of eyes always on to be able to look and say, this is a scam. Um, don't click into it. A lot of us need it. And, and with the spray and pray model, what happens is 
there are different levels of, of vulnerability, but there's, especially in this space, what we refer to as uh, situational vulnerability. Um, and, a, and an example of that is um, I spoke to someone last week who was in the post office when she got the USPS text. So that makes perfect sense that she was going to get a USPS text, clicked on the link, and then all hell broke loose. Um, another horror story is um, a woman I spoke to a couple months ago, very, very sad. Her husband tragically died of a heart attack. And a week later, she was targeted based on his obituary um, saying, you know, kind of like what, what you just described with the IRS reaching out saying you have unpaid taxes, you're at risk of going to jail. All of a sudden, alarm bells are ringing. You don't have time to think clearly or reach out to a trusted contact. And over a matter of weeks, she lost $100,000. Yeah, and it's it's one of these things that, um, and we talked about a week ago in our kind of pre-interview, if you want to call it that officially, but in our conversation was that, that you know, the, the difficulty in the senior care world is that nobody thinks it's going to be them until it's them, and then they wish that they had been proactive instead of reactive, whether it's home care, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, fraud prevention, whether it's putting grab bars in the, the home because mom's getting a little unstable and that would have saved a hospital trip or a broken hip. Um, it's this proactive model that, yes, it costs money up front, but it can save you from a lot of money down the road. And there's, you know, and that that is the benefit of this is that it's really inexpensive for when you look at how much money you can save you down the, down the line. Yeah, ex exactly. And and I, I loved the analogy that you brought up um, with, you know, senior home improvements, for example, a, a lot of people procrastinate on it, and then they don't act until it's too late. And, you know, grandma fell down the stairs. Um, and it's similar with this too. a lot of people and as the problems growing, people are becoming more aware and more concerned. But a lot of people procrastinate on it until it's too late. So until we've lost, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. Um, so yeah, we, we can build the products, but it's really these, you know, the direct users. So older adults who are just hyper sensitive and aware, a lot of them who have had scam experiences, either direct or indirect, and just want to be educated. There's a crazy stat out there that people who are aware and educated with like once a year refreshers are eight times less likely to fall victim, um, to, to scam. So that's our number one pillar, right? We have three pillars of protection. Number one, education. That is the most important piece of all of this. And we do cyber scam education seminars as well so that people are just aware because um, the, the best firewall against this stuff is a human firewall. Number two is technology solutions. Like I said, the scammers are innovating on the tech side. So we have to also. And number three is human support. Um, having that second set of eyes, a trusted contact. Um, and so to your point, we can build all that, but it's up to the people to to take action. They're, they're really the heroes in all of this. Um, and so the caregivers who are um, kind of getting ahead of it, we found um, are very, very happy with the solution and, and um, happy with the peace of mind that comes with it. Um, and so far with, you know, we, we've launched relatively recently, but we've caught about 850 scams um, with estimated savings of around $70,000. Um, so when you do get ahead of it, there, there are real benefits that come with that. And so to be clear, if we haven't been already in the conversation, this is um, meant, to, this is a program that's meant to work in conjunction with your email service like Gmail or Microsoft or Hotmail. Yep. Sorry. So, yeah. yeah. So this is, I, I don't know if we mentioned this is, this is mainly specifically for catching email fraud systems. And a lot of people use Gmail or a Hotmail or a, I don't think anybody maybe somebody uses an AOL account now but you know these type of free accounts that people can have yeah and you know what more people than we think are using AOL accounts um so <laughs> yeah let me take a step back um so yeah our our, our vision like I said I, I gave the backstory um but didn't touch into what the actual product is so and I'll start with the vision our vision is end-to-end -end digital protection a tech solution that is there to always be monitoring and always be detecting and either blocking or warning of, of the incoming scams. Um, so that includes email, which is involved in 30% of scams. Um, it includes phone, both text and audio. Um, everyone gets flooded with those scam calls and those texts. I mentioned the USPS one that is going around. Um, 
social media is a big one. Facebook scams, especially for this segment of the population who are active on Facebook and building relationships on Facebook. Um, and then dating sites. I mean, romance scams and these investment scams that, that start there um, are probably the most emotionally and, and financially traumatic. Um, so we want to be there, but we're, we have to start somewhere. It's a very, very tall and steep mountain to climb. We got to start somewhere. We chose email because one, we found that that's where especially older adults are getting hit the hardest. Um, just like you said, because it's so easy for this, for the scammers to send them out 3.5 billion scam emails sent out a day. Um, and two, um, it, it, it was much easier to build there and we want to build fast because people are in need of protection. They're living in fear and they're losing a ton of money. It, it's a huge problem. I think last year, just to, to get into the data real quick, last year, I think the official number for American dollars lost to scams is 8.8 .8 billion. But the real problem is the lack of data because apparently it's like one in 44 people actually report it. So the numbers could actually be in the hundreds of billions. And then when you look at um, over the age of 60, uh, it was around the reported numbers around 3.5 billion, which is over more than double what it was the year before. So it's just growing at a very rapid pace. Um, and so, like I said, we're starting an email and how it works is it's built into your email experience. You don't have to change your behavior. And right now, the, how the product works is it scans every email and marks it as, as either low risk or scam. Um, and then has a side panel that kind of guides the user to safety and offers human support, um, which our team does 24-7 support. Um, that's only for Gmail right now. We're building into AOL and Yahoo um, because we learned, like you touched on with AOL, especially this segment of the population, they're still on it. Um, and I know I know some some friends that are even on AOL. And that's AOL, and they kind of need it even more, right? Gmail has pretty good security. Although sadly, they they kind of optimize for growth over protection. Um, but we want to move into blocking the scams and offering intelligent insights um, and notifications um, for the users, for those that want it, but also for the caregivers, because a big problem is for the caregivers. Um, and they don't want to strip away, you know, their, their loved ones' digital landscapes or have to put in very strict financial monitoring. Um, but if they get the insights actively at the point of contact your loved one is being targeted by a scammer you know three scams blocked this is you know a x percent increase from the month before they can start to take proactive action they can start to educate their loved ones to make sure that they're being safe um and and then another thing that we offer on top of that is what's referred to as anti-data brokerage which allows you to search your and your loved ones um Inform leaked information online where it's exposed and where it's being actively sold to malicious actors who are then targeting based on it. So it allow you to search for that and then remove it. And so I, I have two questions for you, but the first one is playing a devil's advocate. Yeah. Hey, Yuri, I have Gmail. Gmail is a multi-billion dollar organization, one of the biggest companies in the world. Wouldn't you think they have their act together when it comes to preventing spam for me? Why would I need your services? Yeah, it, it's a great question. It's one we actually get pretty often. Um, I, figure, I, I figure, but it's probably yeah. something that people sit there and say, hey, listen, Gmail's huge. Why why can't they do this for us? Yeah, so I'm going to start with, with kind of the proof in the pudding. Um, I mean, our original story, my, my co-founder's grandmother, she is on Gmail and all of the scams came through. Um, her Gmail account. And more proof is just that scams are getting through Gmail at a very high rate. The why? Um, I'm, I don't work at Google, so I can't speak directly to it. But sound reasoning would, would basically say they, they value um, growth over protection. They want more people sending emails and more people using Gmail. That is their growth engine. Gmail is not going to lose users because scams are getting through where are they going to go there's nowhere else to go in fact gmail out of all of the email providers is already the best at the security um so it, even a company as big as google has to prioritize resources and frankly they're all prioritizing um large language models and and ai right now um so it's frankly it's just not it's not in their best interest to prioritize that and, and I haven't used a Gmail account, a free Gmail. All my business is on Gmail, but that's through Workspace. So you're probably getting 
since you're paying, you're probably getting a different level of security for it. Ryan, I think you hit, did you hit mute? What? Oh, there you go. Sorry, I even, you for sorry, I had, the call was coming in. Um, okay. Even through my, my experience with workspace, I see the ebbs and flows of a, a onslaught of spam and then it goes away for a while and then an onslaught. So you can, you can tell in real time when the cat and mouse game is going on where one thing was getting through and then of course they re the scammers realize this so they triple, quadruple, hundred trillion down on that and then something blocks it because the it's been updated and then more come through. And so I guess my point in being that devil's advocate is that, you know, there's it's it's like any type of crime, whether it's in-person crime or it's virtual crime or e-commerce e crime, it's a cat and mouse game of what's going through. And um, the more layers of protection you have, the better that's going to be. Like going out in the cold, it's good to have layers because the more you have, the more you can you can handle whatever the weather throws at you. But, um, you know, and to your point with Gmail, I imagine <clears throat> there's that sensitive um, or any email service, there's that sensitive balance of you also don't want to block over block things that, you know, your son is emailing you and that's being picked up as spam. And all of a sudden important emails aren't getting through to you that are timely or needed because so much communication now for our accounts and financials is email based. So if you're, insurance is about to lapse on your house right and you're not getting the email about that that's a major problem or or the bills coming in so it's a delicate balance and i don't think you know people take the time to think about it and i'm certainly one of them of being like this isn't as easy as it seems like it would be and when you're dealing with such a large population of of this country that has a lot in savings and has a lot of time and 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 not a lot to do they start going down these roads with these emails and it can cost quite a bit of money. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you touched on on great points there. I mean, one, Google Workspace, they are better there because it's it, it's more in demand from their customers, which are businesses, right? And, and like we touched on in the beginning, businesses have much better cybersecurity options than consumers today. Um, and our whole, our big question is why is that? Consumers are suffering just as much as, if not more. Um, and then they also are are in a little deeper competition on on the business side with uh, Microsoft via Outlook. Oh, all right. Um, so yeah, they they do offer a little bit more. I wish they would do the same on on the consumer side, but but like you said, they're more focused um, on growth. They don't want to overblock. And you reminded me another feature that is more geared towards caregivers uh, and their tools, um, which is the ability to block email addresses. So they might not, even, they might not just be scammers. We've, we've heard from a lot of our users that they have issues with predatory marketing as well. Spoke to one that said um, her mom spent over $5,000 at CVS for basically nothing. Um, so like, that's something that stop. She wants her to stop getting those promotional and predatory promotional emails as they refer to it. Um, and then also whitelist emails to make sure that they don't get blocked. Right. Because like you said, any, um, detection and, and warning slash blocking system that has the risk of overblocking. Um, so we want to take their their um, contact book and and make it easy to to make sure that they're not blocked. Make sure that you know their grandchild, their children, their family members aren't blocked, and that a very easy way to to whitelist them. So we allow the caregivers to do that for uh, their loved ones who might not be as tech savvy, but but we make it very simple. And then the other thing I was going to touch on is, is I imagine this was one of the reasons why you joined the National Aging in Place Council is because one of their pillars is education. And you talked about that being one of your core pillars as well. Um, and there are some people that want to that want to learn more about this. Are, are, I imagine you have blogs and articles on your website, but are you doing webinars? Are you doing other things to, you know, where people are saying, hey, listen, I'm interested in this, but... I'm not ready to pull out my credit card yet to pay for this, but I'd like to learn more and understand how this all works before we move on to the next step. Um, and I figured since you mentioned, mentioned education, you can kind of talk a little bit about what those um, educational events are. Yeah, absolutely. So we do um, cyber scam education seminars for community centers um, virtually, or we can even do them in person. We're in the New York area, so that would be in New York. Um, 
but we're even starting to do them for individual users, right? Or a family if they want it. Um, it's, it's the kind of thing where one, like I said, that that's the most important pillar of protection, even more important than the tech solutions is the education. And so we want to spread that um, as far and as fast as possible. So we're even willing to do it for individual users, even though it takes time. And, it, and if it gets to that point, if the demand is so high, then we can you know productize that as well and create kind of that, that training video model. Um, sure. So people can absolutely reach out for that um, for communities, families, or individuals. Um, and, and yeah, it's just about <clears throat> kind of staying in front of them and, and making sure that we don't get desensitized. Cause like I touched on before, it's that situational vulnerability. It's, it's becoming, you know, with the growth of scams and our digital footprint, it's, it's becoming more of a question of when than if, and people just need to be hyper aware and sensitive of that. Yeah, and and you know, and you you made a great point earlier is that it's a lot of that that is underreported. And you know, we were talking again in the the pre interview, which which we we had to stop because we were like we we were already in the podcast. We need a yeah. we should have recorded this. <laughs> That's so, right. You know, for the people that have, are into documentaries, we talked about that documentary by ESPN called Broke, and it goes through all the reasons why these professional athletes that make tens and some cases hundreds of millions of dollars over their career go belly up and they go broke. And part of that reason is because financial advisors, if you want to loosely call them that, which are basically these, not all financial advisors are predators, but specifically predators posing as financial advisors. I should clarify that. What I mean by that are go getting into locker rooms and stealing money from people. And then because of ego, because of pride, because if they don't want to admit that they got stolen from, they don't say anything. And that allows them to go on to their next victim, possibly in the very same locker room, one of their teammates that they're playing with every single night. And, you know, it, it goes back to a fundamental taboo culture of not talking about when something bad happens to you. The, the Instagram, the Facebook model of only posting the highlights and nobody posts the lowlights, right? And then all of a sudden, the the awareness of it um, does not it stays contained to the individual victim rather than the victim saying to their their friend group, "I got scammed. Watch out for this. Get some protection because if it happened to me, it can kind of happen to you." Kind of situation. Absolutely, and I, and I'm really glad he brought that up, especially as it pertains to our education, because one of the first parts of our education seminars is probably the biggest problem in all of in in scams is victim blaming um and that is what really causes the under well that's what causes the shame um which then results in underreporting. um why are people so ashamed about getting scammed it's because there is this big victim blaming culture very sadly um that needs to improve people very quickly jump to conclusions um and i mean i was yeah, I, I, people jump to conclusions about um, how someone could have fallen for that scam. It, it was so easy to tell. Um, you know, it was completely in their control. Inst and and that in contrast to other terrible things that happen to people when they get attacked physically or when they get attacked by disease, we don't blame them for that at all. But then when you get to scams, we we jump to blame the the victim instead of the perpetrator. So that has to completely shift. The blame has to go towards the, the perpetrator. And for the victim, there has to be understanding, comfort, support. And that will allow people to report more, spread awareness, um, and then ultimately reduce the the emotional trauma and the, and the financial, the, the dollars lost. Um, that That is the biggest problem today in, in scams. And I think as the numbers grow and as more people experience it, I hope they're going to start to realize okay, this is less in people's control than I thought. I should stop blaming them and I should start supporting them. Yeah, and 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 the the other thing that, that you mentioned was the AI. And I didn't even yeah. think about that. And you you I, I I'm a bit of a news junkie. I look at CNBC like 15 times a day. And you <laughs> see these tech layoffs that are going on for the past six months in large quantities and valuations are going down and people are losing their job because of this little bit of a bubble per popping over there. Um, and a lot of these companies, whether they're telling the truth or not, are putting 
they're 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 categorizing their layoffs because they think AI is going to be able to replace these jobs. UPS just laid off a bunch of people. Speaking of parcel deliveries, and they're saying part of that reason or a big part of that reason is AI. And so you think about you know how advanced it's gotten, where where Chat GPT can then somebody with with broken English can go into Chat GPT and and turn it into perfect English and make it. Um, make it read unbelievably professionally, right? Right. F fix all the grammar, make it perfect English, and make it seem professional. Enter, boom, it's done. And then you look at what you said, the deep fakes and, and video conferencing and things like that, where, you know, five years from now, is Ryan really doing this podcast or is it an AI version of Ryan that's doing this podcast that looks just as good? And that is going to open up such a can of worms that, um, I don't think regardless of your age, everybody's going to be vulnerable to because nobody's going to have the experience with it over the course of decades like we do with emails now where you can, you know, say, hey, listen, is this fishy? Is this weird? Um, and you, your, your, your radar is already up when you're getting an email or a text or something like that. But nowadays, like you said, a, a, a phone call could be in a perfect Ryan or Yuri voice that you would never know. And it could be just a computer on the other end with a chat GPT script that's that's saying the the words back to you. Um, and that is yep. a really crazy thing to try to wrap your head around when you're saying, hey, listen, there's this, this AI part is really going to explode in how these scams um, are perpetrated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not only are they using these AI models, they're building them. There's there's a, a program called Worm GPT, which is basically ChatGPT's evil twin brother used for fraud and scams. Um, and they're doing that and, and the deep fakes and, and it's going to get to a point like you, like you described where we're not going to be able to tell what's real and what's not, right? Even today, it's getting harder and harder. Um, but yes, they're getting better in email, which we already have a lot of experience in, but when it moves to you know these these AI generated voices and these deep fakes with videos, it's becoming a huge problem for children with these sextortion cases, um, which are absolutely horrible and terrifying. Um, so it's going to take, like like I said, kind of a fighting fire with fire. Sadly, that we even have to do that. Of it's going to take a tech solution to be able to detect because there's a lot of data points to look at that the human eye can't um, take in and calculate as quickly as technology. Um, so that's kind of what we envision um, as the solution. No, it's 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 great. And it's definitely something that, you know, um, hopefully as you unfortunately have customers that, um, going back to getting rid of the taboo, as you have customers that use your services after the fact, you know, hopefully that they will be able to give you those case studies and those testimonials to, um, to, to prove to others that, hey, listen, um, you know, it's it's worth it's worth the investment in, in preventing there from being a possible huge um, amount of money that goes away that you're never going to recover. I mean, I have local friends that are police officers and they say that they get calls from their residents in their small little town like, I got scammed for $20,000. What do I do? And it's like, I don't know. I I'm, I fight crime in a small little town. I, you can call the FBI, but I don't think you're going to get much help from them either. Like these, this that money is more than likely long gone, and don't do it again. Yeah, I mean exactly. We, we've spoken as well with some law enforcement agencies, and they're just getting overwhelmed with the inquiries, even the inquiries for education courses. They just can't even keep up with it. So people are starting to be aware, um, and. Yeah, it's it's um, it's a tough problem to solve. The after the fact is almost like you touched on is too late. So it, it's and that's why our whole thesis is about kind of attacking it at the source of the problem, at the point of contact, and stopping it there um, before it gets too late. No, it's it's a uh, so then so then Yuri, how do people reach out to you? How do they learn more? Where do they start this process in? Um, investigating and, and using your services. Yeah, absolutely. So you can visit our website at getcatch.ai um, and explore there. And, you know, we're, we're in a phase right now where we want to 
talk to and support people. You know, we want to talk to them about the problem, the, the even the individual issues that they're facing with it, whether you're someone who's uh, worried and concerned about yourself or concerned for a loved one. Um, you can reach me personally at URI, that's U-R-I, at getcatch.ai, um, or even give me a call at 404-931-1662. Like I said, we're open to speaking. We want to continue to build, continue to innovate, um, and, and learn from people and, and support them. Um, like I said, the three pillars uh, of our protection, education, um, tech solutions, and support. That's what we want to build towards, um, and, and we want to be here for that. Um, to, to Like I said, we, we can provide all those products, but it's the real heroes are, are the caregivers and, and the very aware users um, that are taking actions. No, that's absolutely true. And, and um, they've got a lot on their plate and hopefully this can take a little bit off their plate and let them kind of rest assured that, um, you know, their, their loved ones and, and themselves are getting protected from, from this kind of suspicious activity in emails. We hope so. It, it was a very painful personal experience for us and our founding team. Um, and that's why, you know, we're, we're on a mission to, to protect people from that so that they don't have to experience something similar. Great. Well, hey, listen, everybody, go check it out. It's something that's going to continue getting bigger and bigger as um, as we have family members that are very used to using their iPhones and their iPads and their Android phones, you know, as they're aging, this is going to become a bigger problem. And you have that silver wave going on that is going to be a huge amount of seniors that are going to be um, good. They're just, I imagine they're just licking their chops and knowing that Every day, 10,000 people turn 65, which means that every day, even more people are turning 66, 67, 70, 75, 80. So, um, you know, the, the scams are out there. So reach out and uh, and get protected. Um, past that, thank you again for coming on the show. And to all our listeners, thank you for listening. And we'll catch you on the next one.